It was in May and I was 10 years old and I was playing baseball and the girl on deck flung the bat, caught me in the forehead, went to the ER and they said my head would be fine but my heart was really, really bad and I would need heart surgery within a week or two. If it wasn't for the lady, the young lady flinging the bat, I would have died that summer from complications of heart disease. Okay, I'm just going to listen to your heart here. Heart disease refers to so many different conditions. Heart valve disease refers specifically to the valves not working normally. So typically the valves need to be very um, thin structures. They have to make sure they maintain blood flow in the appropriate direction. So when you have heart valve disease, those valves in some way are abnormal. They may have some calcium deposition. They may be thicker than they should be. So they may restrict blood flow going in the forward direction, or they may cause blood to flow backwards. So blood could be going in the wrong direction. So you have a condition called mitral stenosis. So that's where the blood is not moving correctly between the top chamber, the left atrium, to the left ventricle. The causes of heart valve disease are really quite multiple. First of all, you could be born with an abnormal heart valve, and that is considered a congenital abnormality of the heart valve. Um, and so that would start in young childhood into adult and then progress through adulthood. Otherwise, you can develop an infection on the heart valve. You can develop rheumatic fever as a child or young adult that can affect the heart valve. Other risk factors for heart valve disease are radiation. So if you've had radiation to your chest for uh, cancer, certain cancers, occasionally that radiation can damage the heart valves. Uh, and finally, the risk factors for heart valve that are more common are the traditional risk factors that we think about for any other type of heart disease. Things like high blood pressure and high cholesterol. Those seem to be more common in people who have heart valve disease. After my surgery at 12 years old, um, I led a perfectly normal life. I was a young nurse. I had two kids, um, went skiing. In uh, 2006, when I needed my valve, I was at the hunting camp, and I had done Thanksgiving dinner. The next day, I couldn't bake cookies, I couldn't get dressed, and they looked at me and said, you are not having leftover dinner tonight. And I said, I can't even move, I'm so exhausted. But I thought maybe I overdid it, but that whole week, I was really bad. So I went in and they said, oh, it's time for a valve. Heart valve disease treatment is really quite varied. If you have a valve that's abnormal, for the most part, you cannot cure the disease that exists on that valve. That valve may progress over time, or it may actually stay stable. The treatment is really geared towards the symptoms that that valve disease is causing. You might require a water pill to help with fluid that's building up. If you have a heart rhythm problem that's going along with that valve disease, you may need different medications to control that heart rhythm or a blood thinner as well to prevent clots. But if that valve disease progresses and is giving more and more symptoms that cannot be relieved with medications, then the only way to fix that valve disease is surgical correction. Six months before the surgery, I was very sluggish, uh, grayish looking. My friends would say, just sit down, sit down, you look tired. I know I look tired, you don't have to tell me that, you know. But after my heart surgery, you feel younger. I don't know how to explain it exactly. You just feel like a burst of energy. And I still have that. And it's been seven, eight years. So heart valve disease patients may actually have no symptoms for quite a period of time. If the valve is only mildly or moderately abnormally functioning, you may not have any symptoms. But as that disease progresses and as the valve gets more abnormal in its function, that's when you might start having symptoms. And the symptoms to look for are shortness of breath, which can be a very prominent symptom for any of the heart valves if they are abnormally functioning. But you can get a myriad of other symptoms that could include chest pressure or chest discomfort, feeling lightheaded, dizzy, or even passing out if the valve disease is bad enough.
You might get swelling in your feet, your ankles, or even in your abdomen, which may lead to rapid weight gain. You can also be really tired, sort of more so than you would expect for the amount of activity that you've done for that day. Something that's just really atypical for you should uh, certainly alert you and alert you to tell your doctor that something doesn't seem quite right. I did health screenings as a nurse, so I'm really into being screened every year, checking those cholesterol levels, watching your blood pressure, watching your weight. Uh, I do the treadmill yep, and the bike and the elliptical a little bit. One of the things I like to do for exercise is golf. It's relaxing, it's good cardio, and it's great to get out there and swing the club. You've got to take control of your own life. If you have heart valve disease, it's always important to be as healthy as possible because if you need any procedures in the future, the goal is to get those through those procedures with the least amount of complications and risks. So if you are healthy as much as you can be by maintaining an ideal body weight and being physically active, you're more likely to get through a surgical procedure uh, in a better state. This year, I've had my valve for nine years and I feel really good. I can exercise, I can play golf, I can walk around the block without being so short of breath. Heart valve disease can be well tolerated by most individuals. Uh, it certainly is something that you can live a very active and healthy lifestyle with. The important thing, though, is to make sure you go to your doctor's visits like you're uh, scheduled to and to follow your doctor's instructions for medications and testing. The important other part is to make sure you listen to your body so that if you start having a symptom, you alert your provider about it. The important part is just to be conscious of what you're doing and to be aware of signs and symptoms.